right. We made it through one session. Let's hope my internet will hold out for this I one, know. too. I'm so pleased. But hey, even if we stop here, it's been awesome. Hi again, Eric. Hi yeah. again, Kim. He's like, hi again, Mom. <laughs> okay, now the topic is going to be this question from a blog member. What is the bigger purpose behind this global warming trend? And is it really going to be that, this tragic in the next 20 to 30 years as everyone's making it out to be? Resources depletion, rising seas, wars, conflicts, changing landscapes, wildlife habitat, communities at risk. Wow. As you're saying all that and reading all that, he's, he's going, wah, going wah, check, wah. check, check, check. Okay, what, that's all going to happen? Um, okay, this is what he's saying. First of all, the bigger purpose of it, the bigger meaning is, he says, Mom, this is about um, the physicality of being human. You incarnate, you come in to have a physical experience, right? He says, part of that is to take ownership of everything you do. He says, and humans are really good at going like this. I know. Nope, not me. He says, I don't want to take responsibility for their actions. But this is collectively, this is in a big way, obviously, he says. So it trickles down to, obviously, the individual's level that everybody has to begin, the hopes is to get people to be um, more mindful of their actions and how it impacts their environment, not just the um, natural environment, but even the people around them. So because it's, he says, Mom, it's, if, if, if one person decides to throw some litter out um, and their friends are with them and see like, well, it's okay for them, so I, whatever, I guess I'll throw my crap out oh, too. Oh, I just can't do that. He's like, it, oh. it becomes like a, a ripple effect. So behaviors, you know, turn into patterns, but also can, you know, rub off onto other people. So that's where you have to maintain your own personal discernment and take responsibility for your actions. Um, now, as he says, in talking about the way that it affects the environment, um, kind of speaking out of both sides of his mouth, he says we are becoming more aware that um, our actions, the way we use things, and um, uh, we, are, we are a man um, that is highly disposable, like everything's throwaway, he says. Yeah. Uh, so we are depleting very quickly our own natural resources because, and he's going like this, like he's looking around. He says, what's kept sacred anymore? Like yeah. what, he says, we, not just Americans, but worldwide, we're becoming more um, wasteful, I guess is just the best word, and, and quick. We just, we go through things so quickly and we don't have value for our natural resources like we should. Um, he says, if people actually understood the way um, our actions affect our natural resources and how quickly our actions can make those natural res resources diminish, he says, we'd probably change pretty quickly. But um, so, yes, he, he's showing like flooding. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of flooding will continue. Like um, waters will rise is what he's showing so me. Move away from the coast. Uh, He's showing like um, uh, different species of animals having to adapt to new types of climate. So um, it will affect wildlife, you know, which in turn, mom, he says, everything's connected when oh, we look at the food chain and the, the chain reaction of all of that too. You know, the way we hunt for animals to eat, um, those animals might be eating different things, uh, mi migrating to different locations. So that's going to affect sure. how we eat or what well, we eat. Well, I, I live in Houston, which is the meteorological armpit of, of America, by the way. It's so freaking humid and hot in the summer. How hot will it get here at its hottest in Houston, Texas, your birthplace, your homes? He's going up to like, he's going up into like the 140s. Oh, Jesus. I see him like at 145. When? Um, I don't think you're going to experience it for at least another... 20 years he's showing oh, he's like stopping i said can you go 10 more because i have him go in increments of 10 i said can you go to 30 years and he stopped me at 20 so but it's um but the way that he's speaking is in correlation to mankind's collective vibration right now right now so it could change but you know you got china and india i mean spewing out all sorts of 
CO2 and all that. I mean, it's almost a drop of bucket. It seems like it's just a drop of bucket what we do here in the U.S. and in Europe. These third he world says, countries, well, they're going through their industrial revolution just like we did. And we spewed out all sorts of stuff at that time. He says, um, well, it's true, Mom. He says we are sort of just a drop in the bucket <clears throat> if you, like, um, segment it out. Different areas of the world, um, if you look at the natural resource resources that each area uses, um, even the uh, pollutants that different areas of the world put off. Um, he says, but collectively looking at the whole, um, he's not just talking about the U.S. He's talking about the whole world. Yeah, of course. Um, the way we're, we're growing so quickly. But again, he says, in that growth, I have to acknowledge that we are becoming more mindful, but it's um, we are slower to react. It's like we're seeing how quickly natural resources um, dwindle, but we're slower to make long-lasting changes. Yeah, we want to um, just kick the, kick the can. Uh, you know, I'll be dead by the time it gets that bad. So we just kick the can um, down the road. Now, what percentage is man-made, and what percentage is the natural climate cycle of the Earth? Hmm, that's a good question. He's going up to like 70% being man-made. Okay. So, um, But it's so weird because back in the 70s, uh, you know, I remember... Uh, or maybe it was the 80s, I, I remember a Time, Time Magazine article, and the whole big topic was, it's the coming ice age, everything's going to get frozen over and stuff. That was a big fear. And now, it's the polar opposite. What gives? He said it, he just said, um, it is, Mom, it's, it's the opposite. Um, he just makes me feel like scientists um, understood what was happening, but like, the reverse aspect of it like um, you're gonna see more he's talking about the weather um, and how the weather will be affected and, and how we'll be impacted he says you're gonna see more um, rain like more wet more um, hurricanes uh, storms just more rain um, but he says he says the sick thing is even the rain is polluted um, and it it you know puts toxins into the earth and it it's um it's a, a cycle that at this point it's so big that it takes big measures to make any sort of big change yeah. or big effect. So well, it has depressing. to be a global effort. Yeah, it has it to be a global effort. Yeah. A global effort to make any sort of change because it's a global issue. Um He's, this is what he's showing. He makes me feel like, um, statistically, you know, I'm clueless, but um, he makes me feel like other countries um, <laughs> are ahead of us in technology. He's, he's pointing to like China, um, Japan, ahead of us in technology and sort of like way of life. It's a faster way of life. He's making me feel like the U.S., just specifically this part of this region, is becoming more primitive. So it seems like in we're slowly starting to make those changes. But primitive in um, what way? It was what? He says we're becoming, um, we are becoming more mindful of the powerful effects of um, nature, um, especially medicinally. He says, Mom, people get it when their health, <laughs> here comes the language, he says, when their health is fucked up, they know that they have no life. And if it means changing their way of living to be a, a cleaner, greener person, mm -hmm. um, they'll do it because yeah. um, they don't like, you know, no one likes to have uh, compromised health. No. So he's saying, like, we're getting to, um, to compost more, to take care of our trash in better ways. We're being more mindful. It's still a very slow pro uh, process. But... Um, People are, it's slowly transitioning to people being less wasteful. Is, as, a, um, as a world, is it getting better is our, or are we still getting worse? He says, let me put it to you like this. Um, this is really cool. I wish I could just paint this image. He's showing me this image of like the whole world and then Eric is sort of like, you know, this, this bigger perspective looking down on the earth. And he pulls up this blanket and he's peeking in and it's like 
Now this is the wave of, you know, this is the whole new movement upon mankind to um, restore, um, you know, a healthy way of life, a sacred way of life where natural resources, our earth is protected um, and we're less wasteful. So it's like, you know, it's, he says, mom, it's divine timing, it's orchestrated. So um, the mindfulness obviously is orchestrated by a higher being, God, but he says um, the timing of it is planned and we have begun that phase okay. where we're moving towards um, making changes that will positively affect. But to actually see those outcomes, Mom, he says you're talking past 100 years. Ugh. Like to actually see the we're gonna changes. We're going to have to just go around naked. That's my solution. Everybody just strip down naked. Too hot. Um, he says it'll come to a point to where um, it'll come to a point to where we have a we have to go without before meaning like you know we have to go without certain natural resources or you know living off the land before we realize okay it's now or never yeah. I have to make this change yeah because you so, know we, we won't be Mother Earth that dies she is a huge and powerful and she recycles energy and crap. And it'll be us is, that we be, we can become extinct. So it's not like oh, you're damaging Mother Earth behind, because when we're long gone, she will regenerate herself with no problem. I think, right? He's like pointing at you, and he goes like this. He's like, my job is done here. He oh says, yeah, you're sure, right. sure. Now, can you energy heal the? Can like, I mean, we, if we all as a collective, try to energy heal Mother Earth? Does that have any effect? He goes, oh, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> um, he showed me this image one time before. I want to say it was in New York at the Channeling Eric event or Denver. Um, you guys know the movie Avatar. Um, mm -hmm. And when you see the avatars like walking at night and like they touch the trees and then the trees light up. Oh, yeah. And then like every they step, the ground lights up. Um, he says it's the same concept, Mom. Take away all the pollutants. Take away all the trash and the litter. Um, if it was just a world full of angry people walking around, um, that vibration too would affect the earth. Oh. So he says, think about, you know, each time you step on the earth, if you're walking, if, if you are emitting, you know, nasty energy, um, that shit's going to be absorbed, yeah. uh, by the earth. So you can heal it. You can work on, um, giving back love and, and healthy vibrations, um, Think growth, he says. Think growth. Well, or whatever. Any... He's like showing. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, are there any energy healing techniques? Okay, so he's that showing like do? trees and plants. Go ahead. Say it again. Sorry. I think there's a delay in our video. I think there's a delay in our video, so I apologize for interrupting. No problem. But um, when he just kept saying, like, think growth, he's showing like these trees and, and flowers and plants just like bursting up out of the ground. So when you send healing energy to the earth, also, you know, think in terms of growth and helping the earth, um, you know, sort of rebirth, um, give birth to new um, trees, flowers, plants, all sorts of things. Well, can, so, you tell, can you tell our audience how you send healing energy to the earth, Eric? Is there a specific technique that's easy preferably he says yep he says first being mindful of the energy that you are so if you feel like you're in a really good place where you just want to give extra love to the universe um, he says contact is key um, so making contact with the ground is key if you go out in your bare feet and see it you know imagine it mom he says envisioning it is probably one of the easiest ways um, putting your hands on the earth you and imagining yourself um, being a conduit of happy, healthy, positive vibration energy. Um, it's very easy. You don't have to understand um, the physics behind it, he says. Just believe that it works, and I promise you it will, he says. So um, if you can't make contact, if you're stuck in your skyscraper apartment, he says, you can still remotely send um, positive energy to the earth, just through your heart, through your mind, with your intentions. Well, it seems like on Earth Day would be a good thing to have a, a deal where everybody in the world at a certain time, and maybe we'd have to break it up into time zones, do that. Boom! As a collective. That could be pretty powerful, maybe. Just because we here. could. It would be, 
He says the um, the collective consciousness mom would resonate. He okay. says because if we all come together to create that energy, it will continue. It'll resonate. He also says too one of the best you know an easy tangible way to give to the earth um, plant a tree but make sure you do it in love um, plant you know flowers bushes whatever but giving back to the earth in that way too is really powerful mom okay now one last question that I have you might want to add something uh, are there any technological approaches either that we have now or that can be developed in the future to get rid of global warming to take care of the co2 emissions the ozone hole or the hole in the ozone layer anything he says yeah um there are and i feel like they're already in place he says he makes me feel like like what he's showing me is sort of like a uh, biofeedback system where we're measuring um i guess like the efficiency of you know maybe the way we burn fuel or the way that the pollutants um in the air, the way that all of that affects the earth and our health. Um, he says that like some of these um, technologies are already in place, but it seems like we don't value the information enough oh. that they're giving us. Well, I mean, um, is there anything like, te technologically that can like close up the hole in the ozone layer or get rid of all, well, not all the CO2, but you know, mitigate the CO2 increases or in anything, any big technological thing like a giant net or I don't know, I'm just making stuff up. Help, help me. He says, um, <laughs> he says, not quite yet. He does make me feel like there will be some sort of system um, that actually can burn the pollutants in the air and sort of make them evaporate, dissolve, disappear is kind of what he shows me. Um, but we're not there yet as far as um, science and technology isn't. And again, I said, well, you know, how long? He's pulling me out at least 20 years. So um, we're not there yet, but I think we're, get, we're getting pretty close to being able to develop some sort of equipment that can like burn or... Um, use up, dissolve these different gases that, that are, you know, pollutants. But other than that, um, you know, he says, too, that there's, he's like, as much as I hate to admit it, there's still um, value in the experience oh, yeah. and, and yeah. what the whole cycle has, the effect that it has on our human experience. I think so, we need to short um, the tropics and go long on the, you know, polar regions. Um Okay, so will these contraptions that burn up stuff, will it be in the atmosphere, up in the atmosphere, or will it be land-based? Um, I feel like they will, what he's showing me is like, you know those satellites that sort of like float around in space? Um, uh -huh. That's like what he's showing me. And it's it's almost like, he keeps showing me like this, this giant um, tube, it kind of looks like a telescope because it's like long and it's a cylinder and it looks like a laser that just sort of finds these hot spots of oh, um, cool. pollutants and sort of like burn them up or dissolve them somehow or diffuse. Okay. Um, he corrected me there and made me use the word diffuse. So, Is that um, the I, biggest I answer? Don't know that. Is that the biggest answer? What's that? Sorry. Is that the, the big, besides changing our lifestyle, is that the big technological way to handle this is that the best he says that's like he says yeah he okay. says that's what i can give right now <laughs> okay anything anything else on this uh, subject my sweetie happy birthday belated says, it was his birthday yesterday i know he says i love you mom um and i told him i said i said you seem so chipper today and 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 just happy and loud and he's like well well yeah it was my birthday <laughs> like I think yeah. he's still celebrating. He's still Not very good. Um, like in I our family. We, we we celebrate for a week. Yeah, we celebrate for a week usually in our family. Yeah, we everybody gets a week long vacation. I mean, a birthday. Uh, so anything else you want to add, Eric? No. Oh, all right. Don't forget to download our mobile app, the Channeling Eric app. It is totally free for iPhones and Androids, and it'll put all the CE content in one spot on your smart device. From blog posts, YouTube's, Instagram uh, posts, I guess you call them, tweets, you name it. All right. Bye, guys.
Bye, guys.